The motive of selfish people is to transfer their sadness and frustration to other people around them. This is a fact that only few people are aware of, and the show Beef explores this trait in its fullness. The struggles of wanting to be seen, the emptiness that comes with seeking revenge, are all seen in the character Danny Cho. Join us as we take an in-depth look at the psychological roller coaster of Danny Cho. In the Netflix series Beef, Danny Cho encounters another angry person who is just as unhappy as he is. Most times, anger is often the symptom of internal crisis, when you do not know how to deal with multiple emotions within. For Danny's case, this anger came from constantly failing in life. His actions and efforts were never appreciated by other people. While working as a construction businessman in Los Angeles, Danny feels like life has been against him, as he watches other people make progress in their respective fields. Meanwhile, he remains stagnant and keeps getting older. This does not stop responsibilities from choking him on all sides. Danny must provide a dream home for his parents and also put a roof over the head of his lazy brother. The first time we get to see Danny's frustration on display was at a road rage incident, which occurs while Danny is on his way to return items to a big box store. While in the parking lot, a fancy car speeds into his position. The driver of the car makes him even more angry by laying on the horn and giving him the middle finger. Danny, who has had enough, speeds through the streets behind her, trying to get a good look at her face and do who knows what if he catches her. He hasn't thought that far. Driving across a lawn to try and cut her off, she turns the tables and almost runs into him instead. As she speeds away, he manages to memorize her license plate number and, well, he's not going to let this go. Danny vows to teach the driver a lesson. At the end of the day, it was the feud that taught him a lesson by changing the trajectory of his life. At work, Danny puts on a fake smile so as not to annoy his customers. No matter how hard his life hits, people always demand your best side. To achieve this, many people end up masking their true feelings and pretend to be happy. Rather than dealing with the matter at hand, the pressures of life got so much for Danny that his only way of dealing with it was to take his life. It did not matter to him how his actions would affect those in his world because he was a selfish person. For someone to be selfish, he has to hold his own self-interest as the standard for decision-making. This definition totally portrays who Danny is. He cared only for himself and was ready to sacrifice anything or anyone for his well-being. In the comfort of his home, Danny would inhale carbon monoxide from the hibachi grills he had bought. His intention was to die peacefully, and when this did not happen, he tried eating a lot of food for his heart to fail. This measure also proved abortive and did not yield the desired result. Life had not really favored Danny, as he had always been struggling. As a Korean immigrant, his lifelong goal was to get his parents to come to the United States. Normally, this would be a good thing, but he was still healing from the reason his parents had to leave in the first place, an illegal scheme involving his dangerous cousin, Isaac, David Cho. Part of him still blamed his cousin for all the tragedy that they were facing as a family. It is normal to feel bad when things do not go the way we planned, but staying in that spot is our decision. The earlier we forgive those that we perceive ruined everything, the better for us. That way, our decisions can be properly guided. This is something that was lacking in Danny's life, and it fueled his frustration. Whenever anything bad affects an individual, they must go through five stages of grief to properly heal. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. For Danny, he always remained at the anger stage. This was part of the issues that controlled his life. The road rage incident is a sign of everything wrong with him. He's just trying to pull out of a spot. Who does this driver think he is? Left with no other option but to stay alive, Danny goes out to exact revenge on his unsuspecting foe. He visits Amy and messes up her bathroom floor. Being able to pay back the driver from the road rage incident helps to boost his self-confidence temporarily, but this doesn't last. True self-confidence comes from within, and this is something that Danny lacked. He was always waiting for the outside circumstances to make him feel better, and this never happened. Even when it happened, it did not last for long. Before the day runs out, he stumbles on his ex-girlfriend, who is now married. This makes Danny remember once again 
that he has been stuck in a particular spot for a very long time. It matters a great deal how we react to situations. You can either allow it to motivate you to take positive actions or decide to be discouraged. Danny chose the latter. On the other hand, Amy realizes what's happening and escalates the action by Yelp bombing his business and then basically catfishing his brother. Danny is disturbed by this because it was damaging to his business. However, he stays committed to his plans for revenge. Danny's pursuit of revenge gives him something to look forward to every day and makes his life more purposeful. Vengeance drives him mad and takes him to the point where he almost sets a car on fire with a little girl inside. An incident that forces him to access himself and he ends up feeling terrible about how crazy he had become. In search of inner peace, he locates a church and cries out his eyes. His conscience was speaking out. There was still hope for Danny. When an individual loses his moral sense of right and wrong, there is never a way he can trace his steps back. Danny starts to do right and changes his mind about robbing the kind-hearted husband of his foe, Amy. Although we do not get to see it often, Danny had some goodness in him but it had been covered by bad decisions. For the first time ever, Danny's true self would come out. Just when everything was starting to add up, Danny loses all he had spent his life building. The house he built for his parents burned down because of his own decision to install faulty wiring. There was no way Danny would take the fall for this. Someone else must take the blame, and it had to be Amy. Owning up to responsibility and accepting one's fault is not something that everyone can do. It takes a great courage, and this cannot be found among those that are weak at heart. The easiest way out was to deny and then shift the blame to someone else. Once again, Danny chose this path. Danny appeared to be good at this and in his mind. Everyone had a problem except him. He decides to frame Amy by placing the glove of a random woman in Amy's bathroom. As part of his quest for revenge, Danny befriends George by pretending to be a friendly biker named Zane. With the newfound friendship, Danny had access to the home of his enemy. He attends an event at their house as Zane. Amy is shocked to find Danny with her family. She is forced to tell George the truth about Danny. George is upset at being put in the middle. When Danny goes to his house, not realizing George knows the truth, he tries to plant a glove of Amy's to frame her for the fire at his parents' house. George pulls a gun on Danny, and Danny hits him, knocking him out. He drives away in a rush, unknowingly taking June and her dog. Danny doesn't know what to do, so he goes home with June and tells Paul to call Amy to tell her June is okay. Right from his teenage years, Danny was used to making life miserable for people. It was the only way he could feel better about himself, and it was a function of his depraved mind. In the past, he had gone as far as destroying his brother's university applications because of his jealousy. As a result of Danny's actions, his brother could not proceed to college and was stuck at home playing video games. However, Isaac unexpectedly gets out of jail and shows up with his friends. They hit Danny and tie him up along with Paul, taking them and June to Jordan's house to rob her. Things go awry, but Danny and Paul manage to get away. Paul goes over a wall at Jordan's house but Danny hears gunshots and thinks he is dead. He escapes out of a drain and gets into one of Jordan's cars. He drives away, but sees Amy on the way, who chases him in his car. They both drive off a cliff and end up hurt, stranded, and lost in the desert for some time. The real Danny gets revealed here, when he is left together with Amy in the LA wilderness. They fight, but eventually bond. Danny and Amy end up vomiting and hallucinating after eating bad berries. At this point, Danny reflects on how much he had suffered in life, trying his best to be understood. He has had to deal with an identity crisis for as long as he could remember. This internal condition plagued him and influenced his actions and inactions for years. This is the first time that Danny is being vocal about his hurt. It might not seem like a big deal, but being able to speak up about how you are hurting is a great start. Amy joins him in this analysis of life. And finally, the duo come to a conclusion that they are two people who understand each other. They find their way out, but while helping Danny up, George, who is oblivious of how much his wife had bonded with Danny, shoots at him. Danny ends up in the hospital with a ventilator, and Amy remains by his side. It seems after a lifetime of sadness and frustrations, Danny finally found someone like him.